I'm Big Lou, Big Lou Barbecue, and other things I wanna do, and what I wanna do today is cook a brisket in my ugly drum smoker, I'm not promoting any brand of smoker, I'm not promoting any grill, it's something I built. And it's not a tutorial on how to cook a brisket. It is a taste test of this Root Boy Rub number one, beef and bison rub, all right? And if it's for beef and bison, then I'm going to use it on a brisket. Now, I think this is kind of maybe more designed for steaks or something. I don't know, Sal. You need to tell me. But I did watch uh, Dan at Smoky Goodness uh, do some on bison ribeyes. And I've seen you, Sal, do it on bison burgers. And uh, But I'm going to put it on a brisket. And, of course, a brisket will probably take all of this, which means that when you get this ready to sell, Sal, on your Facebook, I'll have to buy some from you. I got this in a contest, for those of you who don't know, won it in the um, giveaway contest that he had where he does the random picker. Anyway, uh, usually on a brisket, they use salt, pepper, and I like cayenne. This doesn't have any cayenne in it, but it does have uh, garlic, onion, thyme, rosemary, and chives, all right? And so that's I'm gonna do that on a about a 13.8 pound brisket. It'll probably take most or all of this bottle, which means I'm gonna have to buy some more. So this is about a taste test on this Root Boy Rob Raw number one. By the way, his channel, Root Boy is two words. The Root Boy cooks, Root Boy two words, and then cooks. But the rub, Root Boy is one word, all right? I don't know why, maybe Sal can tell us. Anyway, let's try it on a brisket. Big Lou barbecue. All right, so here's the brisket, 13.85 pounds, and I'm going to uh, trim it up and I'll show you what it looks like when it's trimmed up and we're ready to put the rub on it. All right, to save your time and data plan, we're gonna uh, speed things up. That little piece was dangling off the end of the point, but that's good. I needed to make some broth for the basting sauce. So uh, I'm gonna make up some broth. I'll show you how I do that. I cut most of the hard fat out of the inside there, but I did not separate the point and flat. I've been doing that lately. In my last brisket video, I did separate them. All right, and I'm no expert brisket trimmer, so, you know, but what I did do with the fat is I made some tallow. I'm going to show you that here in this video as well. Uh, anyway, the, I'm putting some Worcestershire sauce on it as a binder. And I'm also going to use some garlic oil. Now, I know that uh, Sal likes that saying, stir fry oil, a lot. I couldn't find that at my local grocery. I actually looked for it. But uh, I made some my own garlic oil. I usually do, and I have a video about how to do that. You just fry up some pieces of garlic and some olive oil, and it infuses that olive oil with garlic flavor. So I'm using that and the Worcestershire sauce as a binder as I put on this Root Boy Rub number one, all right? And it's gonna take most of this bottle to do this brisket. I expected it to. I do reserve a little bit to put into the broth that I'm gonna make, all right? And so we get the fat cap side, and now let's get the uh, flat side on the bottom there and get it all rubbed down too. Just like that, all right? I wanna make sure I've got it all covered liberally, but I also wanna save just a teaspoon or two to put in the little broth that I'm gonna make. So we get that all covered on there and it's time to take it outside and uh, get it in my drum smoker and get that grill thrill on, all right? So it looks like that. Let's go outside and get it in the drum. Well, all right, as Sal is fond of saying, fire in the hole. So lower down my charcoal basket. By the way, I'm using the Walmart brand uh, charcoal, which I believe is made by Royal Oak. I've got a chimney of coals dumped on top of a bag with uh, about four or five mesquite wood chunks in there. And uh, get the grill grate in because I'm not using the heat diffuser today. Just like that. We'll go ahead and hook up my probes with my uh, pork based probe port. And um, once it's up to temp, we can drop that brisket in there. All right, got the probe ports ready to go. and. Got the brisket out there, ready to drop it in, just using a metal meat claw to drop it in with. I love using the meat claws for just about everything, all right? Put the probe port into the flat and uh, let it start going. Put the a lid on my ugly drum smoker, which has gotten even uglier over the past few years. Now that's the broth I'm gonna make. I got that piece of beef, half a cut up onion, a few pieces of celery, some bay leaves, and the rest of that root boy rub number one in there. I'm gonna bring that to a raging boil for about 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna let it simmer for about an hour and a half. And that's gonna be my broth to make this basting sauce. All right, uh, a little over two hours in, the brisket is at about 141, and I'm going to baste it. So I've got that uh, broth. I've got some Worcestershire sauce in there. I've got some of that garlic oil in there. And I got a few drops of this morning's coffee in that too. And that's what I'm going to baste it with, all right? Um, sounded good to me, all right? 
And anyway, I just get it all basted. I could have put that in a spray bottle if I'd had a spray bottle, but just basting it the old-fashioned way, doing it real light, not to rub that rub off of there. All right, and now uh, two hours after that, about four and a half hours into the cook, it's at 165. 241 is where my smoker is running. Like I said, it was running between 230 and 245 all day long. All right, so I pull the probe port out, lift it up with a meat claw. You can see that it's still real tough. It just comes out with just one meat claw. Drop it into that cake pan that I use for prepping just about everything. It's what I used to prep it with earlier this morning too, but I want to guarantee you that I washed it real well after having the raw meat in it. Uh, lined it with some aluminum foil, pour on the uh, basting sauce, and then wrap it up in the aluminum foil real, real tight like a baby. Drop it back in there, put the probe port in there, and it's going to go another several hours till it's above 205 degrees. All right, let me tell you what else I did. Hey, while I cooked, I made some tallow with the uh, beef fat. Got a, a pretty good color. Tallow's a little yellower than lard. But, you know, it's got that yellow-gray color to it. Smells perfect. I did have a little mishap with the filter on the bottom, but that's okay. That's just the stuff on the bottom. French fries fried in this tallow, beef tallow stuff, that's good stuff. Big Lou barbecue. All right, I got it on the smoker around 8.30 a.m., and it's now about 3 p.m., and it's at reading at 2.05. It's hard to see because you're looking out in the yard to the sun right there. So move the camera around. I'll show you what the uh, temperature was reading. The bottom number is the brisket. The top number is the cooker. The cooker got up around 2.50 a little higher than I wanted, but that's okay. All right, I want to double check it with my thermopop, and it's a little over 200 in the flat, 198 in the point, 197 right there in the point, and then I go back to the flat, and it was 209 right there. All right, so time to bring it in. All right, I pulled it off around 205. You saw when I pulled it off, I put it in this pan that I had it in this morning when I prepped it, but of course it's been cleaned and washed and everything before then. And then I wrapped it up in aluminum foil and just set it in the oven. The oven wasn't on, just my kitchen oven has been in there for about two hours. It's right now about 5 p.m. and I took it off, oh, around 3 p.m. So let's take a look at it. There's some of that juices that have leaked out into that pan. And like I said, this is just regular aluminum foil. Oh, it's got a better bark than we thought. That really, gosh, I wish you could smell it. Oh man, I wish you could smell it. All right, well, let me get a fork and flip it here. All right, what I wanna do now is uh, flip it over so we can get a good look at that bark. I mean the fat cap side rather. Fat cap side looks like that. First time I've ever cooked one. Uh, first time I've ever cooked one fat cap down or without the diffuser in my UDS. Now we're gonna put it onto a uh, cutting board. All right, on a cutting board. Grain is running uh, this way, so we're gonna cut it just like that. See what we got here man look at that smoke ring look at that smoke ring Woo! gosh I wish you could smell it now I'm gonna tell you something during the taste test I did contact Sal via Facebook and that one's a little too thick you can see it's it's too thick to hang but there's a pull test there's a pull test. Now let's see if I can get a thin one and see what we can do here. But yeah. well, there's how, how it bends. See that? Been like that and didn't quite break. There's the pull test. I'll get it on camera there. All right. Look at that smoke ring, y'all. All right, let's go ahead and cut right through the point here, and then I'll separate them so you can kind of see that fat cap in the middle. We're doing like that right there. Mm. The point on top, and this side here, it's the flat that. 
right there and I'll cut that loose. That's all point. Mm. No, actually I got it backwards, I'm sorry. That's the point, because I'm used to fat cap up. There we go. Had that backwards. Boy, I blew that one, didn't I? I forgot. This is the flat. There's, the, there's where the point begins right there. And that fat in the middle. Mm. Gosh, y'all, that's going to be good. Get a big old cut right here through the middle. And it's flat. Big old slice there. And it hangs too. Kinda. Of course, that's a pretty thick slice. There's a pull test with it. <clears throat> All right, let's get this taste tested. All right, yeah, that was a little embarrassing. Uh, I was cutting it upside down from what I normally do because I normally do fat cap up. And I would forgotten that for a minute. Yeah, the flat was on the top part right there. All right, I got this piece of the flat. I'm gonna try. That's that thick piece I cut off the corner real quick earlier. With that gorgeous smoke ring. And I got a little piece of the point. All right, I'll try that point first. You know, it's tender, moist. Mmm. That's good. Redeem myself on camera because the only other time I cooked a brisket in my UDS on camera. It was when, right after I first built that UDS and it was really moist. I'm going to tell you about that rub here in a minute though. Let's try this flat piece. Oh, that's a good meal. Mmm. All right. I'm going to get this chewed. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'll talk to you. All right. I mentioned in the intro that I wasn't sure if Sal uh, intended it for brisket. I know he had intended it for steaks and burgers and such. And I contacted him via Facebook during this cook and uh, he told me, you know, I didn't. He said, you know, the number two rub might actually be better on brisket. He said he did intend it for steaks and stuff. But you know, every time I cook a brisket, somebody from Texas tells me salt and pepper only. I'm a cayenne guy. I like cayenne with my brisket. I'm, I'm not from Texas. Texas 15 miles west of here. I'm in Louisiana. I like cayenne on my brisket. So what worried me about this was there's no cayenne in that rub. It's also got a lot of those herbs, thyme, and, and stuff that I read to you earlier in it. And uh, But you know what? That works pretty good with that. It works good with beef, and it works pretty good. All right? It's not a real crunchy bark, but then again, I had it wrapped and had that broth in there with it. I got to tell you, though, it's really, really good. It does have a lot of salt, and you can taste that cracked black pepper. And... Um, the garlic and everything else works well with it. And you know, it's good on the brisket. It is really, really good on the brisket. I was thinking about cutting it with some cayenne and adding some to it, but it's good just like that, y'all. So I'll get that uh, stuff on your Facebook page soon and start selling it. I need to buy some more. That took all my bottle. Bye, y'all. All right, my wife's just off camera. She's not gonna get on camera, but she just had that burn in off the back of the point. That's my favorite part. That's your favorite part, Well, Yes. A lot of people like that part. All right, go. Tell, tell them what you think. Well, you asked me about the rub, and I think it's really good. I like More the... More um, Yeah, I like the blend of, of um, herbs. It's got those herbs in it. It's good. Anyway, mm -hmm. Big Lou Barbecue. Thanks for watching.